Some of you perhaps will have seen the news item about the grieving son and mum who was separated at a funeral by a somewhat perhaps overzealous chapel attendant. I've got loads of sympathy with that family, but some too with the attendant. He'll have been given his rules and told what was to happen and what was not to happen. And he will probably have sensed if he let them get together, others would do the same and he would be for the high jump. Yes, maybe he could have been more sympathetic, but so too, of course, could the rule makers and rule enforcers. They are the ones who set and define the boundaries after all. Touch, physical human contact, has never been more problematic and yet more important and more powerful than it is in these days of COVID-19. We know, we quite literally sense what we've lost. In Matthew chapter 8, the apostle describes Jesus touching a leper. It goes like this. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing. Be clean. Immediately, he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Even in the context of a large crowd, there's a tremendous amount of intimacy in Jesus' encounter with the leper. We're told that after the Sermon on the Mount, great crowds followed him down from the mountain and yet, after he touches and heals the leper, he is able to say, tell no one. It seems odd and unlikely. Yet it is perhaps with just a glancing touch and a whispered word that the leper is healed and directed to go to the priest to be restored fully to communal life. Leviticus tells us that once a person was declared a leper by the priest, he or she was cut off from contact with society. They had to display marks of mourning, tear their clothes, cover their lips. When someone drew near, they must call out unclean. He or she would have to remain outside the community so there was no access to the temple, no access to Jerusalem. This man would not have been touched for a very long time. And now when he is touched, He's touched by God. Think about it. In language, the idea of touch is used to convey so many things. People are called touchy when they're oversensitive, hurt or threatened. We describe people as being out of touch when they're disconnected from what's happening culturally. We develop a fine touch when we acquire a sense of rapport or empathy or skill in a particular field even. Touch, of course, is an integral part of worship through blessing. Think of the laying on of hands, anointing, the foot washing liturgy, the peace, all things that can't happen at the moment in church or not as we understand them. Touch, of course, was integral to Jesus' own ministry. And sometimes the examples that resonate the most are the ones where Jesus does not touch, but allows himself to be touched. Here are the greater risks, the greater leaps of faith. Whether it's a woman who touches the hem of his cloak and is healed of her bleeding, the woman who anoints him with her tears, or Thomas trying to recover a destroyed faith by putting his finger into the wounds of the risen Christ. Our society is rightly very sensitive about touch. It can be damaging, threatening, abusive, we know that. But exercised in the context of sensitive sacramental or non-sacramental care and with appropriate boundaries, it can be profoundly healing. Our community is full of people who are perhaps never touched and that's the measure of our atomized lives and our sickness. We have to be careful and appropriate and recognize boundaries, especially during this pandemic. 
but to become a community, a society, a body that can be a vehicle for the healing power of Christ, we need to reclaim the dignity of healthy human touch. One last thought. We are who we are because God in Jesus touched the world. Amen. <laughs>